All right. Uh, greetings, greetings, fellow K-10s. It's Mr. Shajau here and welcome to Back to Basics, right? So basically, what is it that we are looking at now? We are looking at our functions, right? So we are going to be looking at basically this is going to be our parabolic function together with our straight line function. right? So this is a paper from, I think this is November 2017. Or to get, please ensure that you check that particular paper for more visibility. Now, uh, let's start here. They say, firstly, the diagram shows the graph of g of x, which is equals to ax squared plus q, and the one of f of x, which is mx plus c. Then they say r and s are the x-intercept of g, and t is the y-intercept of g, the graph f and uh, the graph F passes through R and T. Basically, that is that. So they are saying R and T is the point of contact for both of these particular graph. Now, the first question is, write down the range of the graph of G. Now, what is range? I think that's where we need to start. So basically, when we are talking of range, we are saying, now, this is going to be all the possible all the possible x values, right? All possible y values. Why am I saying x? Y values, right? And how do we then find out for the range, right? So basically for range, what is it that we do to find out our range? We say we start from here. We start from below up until the point, up until the maximum point of that particular graph, right? Now, if you can look at this particular thing, can you see that this particular graph here, uh, the value of your y ends here at point T, right? Uh, the value of y ends here at point T, and it never, you know, surpasses that point or it never crosses that point to go to the other side. Now, it's okay. Which means basically now, if you are looking uh, for that particular point if you are looking for the range the particular the graph you know uh it exists from here can you see that here there is an arrow here there is an arrow which means this graph is continuing but here it ends here because there is no any other further y values that you are going to get from here so which means you are going to say for 5.1 right you are going to say look uh, for your range, your it's going to be y is your element of real numbers, and then your y is going to be what is going to be less than negative less than or equals to negative eight. Y is going to be less or uh, equals to uh, what positive eight. Why are we saying that? Because this graph is equals to eight and also less than that. Because anything more than eight, the graph doesn't exist altogether. There is no y value for the graph of G, right? So basically, which means the graph is going to only end at that particular thing. And then now they say, look, uh, write down the x coordinate of R. Now, what is going to be the x coordinate of R? Look, as soon as you see this particular graph here, there's one thing that you can see. Now, can you see that this particular point here, T, uh, it, it is evenly distributed from this side and also that side because the turning point is also going to be your y-intercept, right? So which means the distance from here up until here is going to be the same as the distance from where? The distance from here up until, right? Up until here. And if these two distances are the same, therefore, if they are looking for the x coordinates for r, the x coordinates for r is going to be given by negative two. So, which means your 5.2, your x coordinates for r is going to be given by negative two because that one is positive two. I want to get. So, basically, that is going to be that one. And now, if we are moving swiftly along, what is it that they want us? They want us to find out the coordinates of what? Uh, the values of A and Q. The values of A and Q. Now, let's start here. Your value of your A represents your gradient. Remember, this is given by G of X, which is equals to what? Uh, which is equals to your A. This is same as your A. Uh, X squared plus what? Plus your Q. Do we have any coordinates from this particular point? Definitely we have uh, the point there. Now, if you can look at your point T, your point T already here represents your what? It represents your turning point, but it also represents your what? It also represents your Y-intercept, right? 
uh, which means now when it represents your y-intercept, which means basically it represents your q. I would again. So which means what is it that you're going to have? Which means basically you're having this as y is equals to ax squared plus what? Plus 8 because your q represents your y-intercept. Now that we have that, do we have any point from or do we have any point that passes on this particular graph of g? Yes, we have the s which is 2 and 0, right? And I preferably want us to use the s because it's the coordinates what that we are already given right other than us using the one that we are calculate we've calculated because we are not certain about its correctness right so we are going to say now we are going to substitute s and your point s is two and zero in this one right to find out what is the a so when you substitute the s what is it that you're going to have your y is going to be zero is equals to a and your x is going to be two squared plus your eight and what is going to be this this is going to be same as four uh four a plus eight is equals to zero then therefore what is going to be this uh this is going to be same as what when you are doing like this let's see and uh remember here uh this is going to be same as uh your four a is going to be cos to negative eight when you are taking this this side divide by four divide by four which means your a is going to be given by negative two which actually makes sense right uh your a is going to be given by what is it going to be given by negative two uh yes it's going to be given by negative two which makes sense because your uh your graph here it is your frowning face remember when your a is greater than zero it's it is a smiling face graph right and when your a is less than zero it is what it is a frowning face graph, which means indeed here, uh, this graph is looking downward. So your A is going to be less than what? It's going to be less than zero. So this is absolutely correct. Oh, it's okay. So now you found both the value of your what? The value of your A and also the value of your Q. Then that's that. Uh, then now let's move swiftly along. Now, uh, what is going to be the value of your what? They say determine the equation of what? Of F. Now, what is the equation of F? The equation of F is this uh, straight line graph. And now for us to work with a straight line graph, what is it that we are required to do? Our straight line graph, can you see at this particular point and at this particular point, this is going to be uh, the coordinate which is given by negative 2 and 0. We have a, we have two points. We have R and T. So the first thing that you can do, we can calculate for the what? We can calculate for the gradient of that particular graph, right? So we can say, look, now using point R and T, we are going to say gradient of this graph is going to what? Gradient of R T. Uh, is going to be what is going to be y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1 and what is going to be that that is going to be what is your y2 your y2 is same as 8 subtract let's say the other one you use the zero then the other one you are going to use what you are going to use now zero subtract your negative two and what is going to be that this is going to be same as eight over two which is same as four right which means your gradient is same as four and now that your gradient is same as four you can substitute any of the point either your r and also or your t to calculate the value of your what the value of your c for that one right remember now your your equation is y is equals to four x now plus c then you can substitute, let's say you substitute your negative, uh, your 8 and uh, your 0 and 8, right? So this is going to be 8 is equal to 4. Uh, and then what is going to be the x? The x is 0 uh, plus your c. Then this is anything multiplied by that is that, which means your value of your c is going to be 8 altogether. So the equation is y is, uh, y is equal to 4x plus 8. I would get then that is going to be that particular equation that you are going to find in here hopefully now all of these make sense to you and now i want us to move swiftly along to the next question the next question is now they want you to find out where f of x is equal to g of x basically they want us to find out uh to determine the values of f of x where f of x is equal to g of x basically when they say where f of x is equal to g of x they want the point of contact and what is going to be the point of contact for both of those graph the point of contact is going to be these uh here where x is equal to zero and where x is equal to negative two because that's where your point r and your point t 
or both of these graphs are touching each other, right? So it's going to be where x is equal to negative 2 or where x is equal to 0, right? So that is going to be that. Now, when they say where, now what? Uh, when this is going to be what? Uh, the other one, they want you to find out where x, uh, what the value of x, where x is going to what? G of x is going to be less than 0. So now what is it that you are going to do? Uh, now, the one where the g of x is less than 0. So let's see in terms of what is it that you're going to do. Uh, now, uh, let's start here. So now when this uh, x multiplied by g of x is less than 0, what is it that you're going to have? What is the g of x firstly? So now, if you can start here. Now, if you can look at that, uh, let, I want us to look at this particular thing. When they say x, then multiply by g of x uh, is less or equals to zero. Now, what was this uh, coordinate? What was this point firstly? What was this graph of ours? The graph of ours that we had here, uh, this is same as what uh, we are saying. This is x multiplied by what is the g of x? The g of x uh, is what uh, is uh, given by x squared. Remember, this is given by uh, so therefore that you don't have to, you know, even multiply this. So basically now let's just do it this way. Now, when uh, this graph is going to be that, uh, it's basically going to be here where your graph of G of X is less than zero. Now we are going to focus here, right? You are going to focus on this, right? When it's less than zero, you focus on that. And where is this graph going to be uh, less than zero here? Now, uh, then when they say uh, your graph is less than zero, it's going to be uh, your point of focus is going to be on this particular side, right? This is where your g of x uh, is less or equals to zero. So which means it's going to be here and also it's going to be here. So which means basically it's going to be where x, can you see that when the graph of x is greater than two? Or oh, when it comes from this side up until here, it's going to be where the graph is, what it's going to be less than zero. I would care. So which means if you start here moving in this way, can you see that this graph is less than zero here? Similarly, here the graph is less than zero from here. So which means uh it's going to be where x uh, is going to be where it's going to be uh from negative uh infinity up until negative two, right? Or oh, where x is greater than 2. So which means basically it's going to be when your x is greater uh, than what? Greater or equals to 2 because there is that. Because when it's greater or equals to 2, that's where the graph exists. Similarly here, uh, now it's going to be where your x is from. Where? It's from negative 2 up until what? Up until uh, it's from negative infinity up until 2, right? Because when you're coming from here up until here, that's where your graph is going to be. Uh, ne uh, negative. I would okay. So basically, that is going to be that. Uh, so that is going to be this particular point where your graph is going to exist. I would okay. Now, uh, uh, let's see in terms of what else can we have from this particular thing. They say now the graph of h of x is obtained when the g is reflected along the line y is equal to zero. Write down the equation of h in uh the form h of x is equal to px squared plus k. Now, they say this one is what R uh, is reflected. Now, so basically what is that is going to happen? Uh, when you are reflecting, they want you to reflect the graph of what? Of G. So we are saying now uh, the graph of uh, H of X uh, is going to be what? Uh, it is reflected about your Y axis basically. So which means the X is going to change. So basically this is going to be into uh, g of x, or rather into g of x, right? So basically that is going to be that. And now what is it that you're going to know from this? Uh, which means this is going to be negative. What is uh, this particular graph? It was negative 2 uh, x squared. Remember this graph, it was negative 2 x squared plus 8. I would get that was the graph of what? That was the graph of g of x, which means now the new graph of h of x that is going to be obtained. It's going to what? When you multiply by the negative, this is going to be 2x squared minus 8, right? So which means that is going to be the newly formed graph of h of x. So this is how basically you are going to solve this particular graph. Hopefully this now makes sense to you. And thank you very much.